it was interesting because when I found out that I, you know, they wanted me on, I was like, I've got to do something fun and interesting. I want to entertain, you know, not just with my personality, but with, I want to show people that using color and using pattern is scary, but it still is not going to make your space less valuable. And so, and we proved that last night, which was wonderful. Um, Tiffany and I were right on board. We wanted to do, I, and she was like, you know, she was very focused as I was at the beginning. We're like, where's it at? What's the zip code? Let's do medium prices. Like what's the, what's a five bedroom, you know, three bath, what's it going for? What's the finishes? And we went that direction for about three minutes and it was not coming natural for us. We were like, this is then going to be work. I go, screw it. I go, let's just do us. We're color, we're print, we're pattern. We love stuff. You know, we're maximists. Or ma what do they call it? Not a minimalist, but a maximist? Yes, that's us. We like things in excess. We like things that tell a story. So we had to figure out what our story was. And so we figured we wanted to do a storybook cottage and we wanted to make it feel comfortable and wonderful and warm and collected. And I think we did that, but it's a very casual space. We weren't going for hotsy totsy French design, which is absolutely gorgeous. It's just not who we were during this competition. So the first thing I, and I've done this in Color Splash, um, probably almost every single episode, what I do, it's a blank room, clear everything out. I wanted to add architecture and Architecture, the easiest way to do it is through beams because they're easy, they're beautiful, they're cost effective, they create an impact and you can lay them out in so many different ways. You can lay them close together, you can lay them um, in a um, crisscross fashion which gives you a more formal feel. There's so many things you can do with it to create that architecture without taking up any space on the walls or on the floor, which is wonderful, but it definitely tells a story. So right when you walk into a blank room and you know how there's beans there, it's telling you a story without anything else being in it. And that's what I love so much. I love the product because with faux beams, they're incredible because they're light and you don't have to make sure that they're so in there where it's, you have, you, they're not supporting a load like a real wood beam. And I know you, we do real wood beams, which we did on the show, which is amazing. But the faux ones are much, you can use them anywhere. You don't have to have supports to hold them. And that's the beauty of having the faux because you can put them anywhere without having to worry about the structure on the inside. There's advantages to both. Like I, that's what we wanted the space to feel like. We wanted to feel cozy. We wanted to feel collected. We wanted to feel lived in. We wanted to feel anyone could feel comfortable here without having to take your, you know, we want people to take their shoes off and just relax. Not have to take your shoes off, want to take your shoes off. There's a big difference. <laughs> so we had a light floor. We had like a medium to light floor. Um, they're like French oak, which is beautiful. For me, I want contrast between that. So if I had a darker floor, I would have gone with lighter beans. I wouldn't have done the matchy match because then you're not creating visual depth with wood. When you go into a forest or look at a, a, um, a tree or leaves, you don't see one shade. You see multiple shades and same with um, same with tree, tree bark, you see multiple shades. And so to me, creating lots of different finishes with wood, uh, whether it's rough or smooth, um, I like to have the contrast between the two and same with the color. So to me, I break all the rules. Like I don't look at as beams as traditional. I look at them as a base to tell a really interesting story. Well, one beams bring in, they can bring in and all how they're laid out. They can bring a very class. If they're really um, tight beams, like they're very smooth finish, brings a more um, formal feel. If it's more hewn, it's got like a raw rough, it's more casual. But to me, it's like if you have those rough beams with like really sleek furniture, there's a nice dichotomy between the two. So there's really no rules. It all just depends what you want. But to me, having the contrast between the floors and the beams have it different is really smart. It makes the two stand out on their own. So, so many people like say, you know, if you have eight feet or under ceilings, you should not do faux beams. I say, shh to that because you don't have to do the big ones and, and like that you just you can still have the essence of it by doing them much smaller um granted the taller your ceilings the bigger beams are going to be um so i break all the rules um just don't bring it down past 
too far down because if you're hitting your head or it looks a little weird or if it's making it feel a little cramped, then you've gone a little bit too big and a little too deep. So to me, I wanted to put beams into the dining space and we tried, but we just couldn't get them in time. And I wanted to put them in the kitchen. I think kitchens are, I think they should be used in bathrooms, hallways, bedrooms, dens. They could be used anywhere. Again, it tells that story. A bathroom, obviously you want it to be a little bit taller of a ceiling because it's smaller, but there's no rules. Even if you have just one beam going through the bathroom, it shows that there's like, ooh, interesting architecture. So maybe when they built it, they added onto this and this. It tells a different story than just like, oh, there's a beam. Like it puts you into a mind of like, ooh, how old is this house? How interesting, why is this here? Was this here because it was here before? Is this an outside beam? It just makes you think of all of these really unique things that you see like in the French countryside or the English countryside. Um, and then you're always wondering why and where and how. I don't know if I've done a lot of, I mean, I've done a lot of beam work. It's just basic beams. Like sometimes they'll be four feet apart or six feet apart or sometimes two feet apart. I think the most dramatic one I did, I did for a special on Color Splash in Miami and we did a coffered ceiling. So that means that we're taking beams going this way and running this way. And it was a lot of work, really detailed, um, but what it did, it elevated it to a level of sophistication, but because they were wood, it also felt casual at the same time. The more detail you have on the ceiling, the more expensive the house looks. So the biggest thing you need to take into consideration is um, where your beams are going to lie. Um, like how, what's the size of your beams? Like if you're gonna do an eight inch beam by eight inches down, if your beams, if you have them planned going over the windowsill, is your windows eight inches off the ceiling? And are you gonna hang drapes there? If you want drapes all floor to ceiling, then you have to avoid that area. So there's lots of things to think about. Uh, fire extinguishers, um, fire alarms, uh, air ducts. Lighting is the biggest one. If you have um, recessed lighting, you wanna make sure that you're not crossing any of that recessed lighting. So planning is huge. All you need to do is just lay everything out or get a copy of your plan. Which, what I did with Pam, and I went like this, just drew with a little marker, went like this, this looks great. I'm avoiding all the major electrical lights, I'm avoiding the windows, um, I'm avoiding everything I possibly can. And it's a little tricky, but it's fun, it's like a puzzle. I do beams, I do architecture first. So when I have a blank room, like we did with Rock the Block, what I do is like, how can I add architecture? I like to add architecture into every single space that I do because it just adds an element of beauty. Um, and beams are the best way to do that. They're inexpensive, they're easy to put up, um, and they create such a great impact. So that's the first thing I do. And then I work everything else around it. COVID has definitely set everything back. Shipping, you know, we've been so accustomed before COVID that everything would happen within a day or two. Um, we were waiting sometimes weeks for people to deliver to us. And it's just like, everything was just magnified to the 10th degree because of the, you know, because of the lack of shipping. And it was just a lot, yeah. Air Design always delivered right on time, exactly when we needed it. When you said it was gonna be there, it was. Thank you. be one person outside in the public but let your freak flag fly in your own home do whatever you want listen to nobody if you want your walls all different colors then you paint your walls all different colors just supplement that with neutral you know everything else so that everything's not too crazy but there's ways to do it um, there's ways to be yourself if you want everything white you go for it if you got dogs and you want all white, you go for it. You're just going to be cleaning a lot. Just like there's no rules when it comes to design. Your house is your, your space. And if someone comes in and tells you you're doing it wrong, then they shouldn't be over at your house at all. I want people to walk away from the Rock the Blocks experience and look at our house and be like, I can be brave. If they can be brave on national television and be weird and fun and think outside the box, then I can too. You know, I want people to be inspired by it. Um, I want people to get out of the neutrals. 
if they want to. Like I'm not forcing anybody. I'm just doing this because I know how to work with color. It's a passion of mine. I can't imagine my life without color. It just, it gives me stress not to have color in my life. So you start with your most expensive area. If you have the money to redo your kitchen or if you're just gonna paint, start with the areas that you use the most. So your kitchen, um, your living space, um, your main suite, those are the great areas to start. Or if you're nervous, start with a guest bedroom and see how you do. Like use that as a, a jumping off point of like somewhere of like, I'm nervous, I'm scared. Let me throw something together. Cause it's not really, then you're not really committing. It's just a guest bedroom. And if it doesn't work out, you can just take everything back. That's the great thing about a return policy people. <laughs>